I keep getting taller and taller and taller than I am. <laughs> and I always like to remind people, particularly our JJC professors. <laughs> that no matter how hard you try, no matter what you do in order to gain another professorship, they are only going to give you one salary. That's the problem. So you don't get two salaries, you get one salary. So all those JJC professors, you have become professors now, you have 15 years to get the second professorship. And I am particularly proud of one of them, Menasara Kurfi. We have been together with him all over the world, and I have seen the way he has been absolutely scholastic. And just about an hour ago, Medesara Kurufi said, I shall tell the whole world that the first week of December this year will be when he will present his inaugural lecture. <laughs> so we would like to thank you very much for that. I am not a member of this August organization. I'm an interloper. I'm a media anthropologist. I'm a researcher. So I look at things from different angles, not as an insider, but as an informed outsider. And when I was asked to talk about this, and I thought the best thing to do is talk about artificial intelligence. Because this is the buzzword now. This is trending. This is what is coming up now. This is what people want to know about, what they are saying. And in the presentation, we will see how good and how extremely bad uh, it can be. And most importantly, how racialized it can be. So we need to be aware of what it is so that we can take care of the things that, that will be coming our way. And screen doctoring is the dark aspect of public relations. Public relations is about improving relationships. And screen doctoring is about taking care of number one, about being selfish about it's, it's, it's a reactive not proactive whereas public relation is proactive Spain doctoring is reactive it's trying to do damage control and so on and that is where the the artificial intelligence thing comes in in full force i am not going to read all my slides at once because i know we are a little bit tired but there is available if anybody wants to look at it they are very free uh, to, to, to get it. You can download it, you can copy it, and so on. It's together with, uh, with them. Now, before you talk about in artificial intelligence, we need to talk about human intelligence. So let's take a look at human intelligence, and let's look at how artificial intelligence is created, and let's look at spinning a yarn. And of course, we all know what a yarn is. It's a tale, a story. Let's look at spinning a yarn in public relations, and then how artificial relations, uh, artificial intelligence and public relations will, will come in. And one of the most visible forms of artificial intelligence is chat GPT. And we're going to look at that and see. And you can download chat GPT on your phone right now with open eye. Just simply say chat GPT, it will give you a link. You just simply download it, give your email and so on. And you are now interfacing with artificial intelligence. We will see the, 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 the good and the bad part of it. When you look at intelligence, human intelligence, there are a series of parameters that determine what a person is as an intelligent person. Learning, the reasoning, understanding, grasping the truth, seeing relationships, considering meaning, uh, separating fact from belief. The last one is very critical because determining whether the data is adequately supported by provable sources that can be demonstrated to be consistently valid, which means that there is another factor that enables you to assess, to accept a particular data. That is why people are intelligent. A machine is not intelligent, let's be very clear. A machine is just simply a programmed series of codes. It doesn't have a moral judgment, it, does, it doesn't make a moral judgment. It, it has no feeling of love, hate, it has no emotion. 
And these th emotions are what critically determines what intelligence is. And if you want to see a vivid example of the relationship between a human intelligence and machine intelligence, all I ask you to do is watch a film called Terminator by Arnold Schwarzenegger. In, in that film, there is an artificial intelligence robot and then there is a human robot, and there is a human being. And the two of them are conflicting about what constitutes humanity. So our intelligence is what makes us human. I say this because it is very critical to understand that no matter how beautiful artificial intelligence is, no matter how much it takes your breath away, no matter how passionate you are by it, you are the human being, you are the person who controls all, all sorts of things. And everything else about artificial intelligence is programmed. If somebody has created it, someone has sat down and designed it, the algorithms are there, and therefore we need to be aware that human intelligence will always be superior to artificial intelligence. And at its simplest form, artificial intelligence is a field which combines computer science and ro ro robust uh, data sets to enable problem solving. It's about deep learning, and it uses certain algorithms which seek to create expert systems which make predictions or classification based on input. And over the years, artificial intelligence has gone through many cycles uh, of type, but even to the skeptics, the release of Open, uh, open Eyes ChatGPT in 2021 seems to mark a turning point. When it was released in 2021, the creator was so scared of what it does and what it could do that he stopped it completely. He, he didn't continue until much later. This is because of the potential such GPT and other artificial intelligence devices have for misleading people in the wrong hands. And that is why we are coming up with all this business of hacking. Nobody knew anything about hacking until people who have bad intention uh, begin to use their own skills to penetrate into computer systems and alter uh, all sorts of things. And that is when we started getting worried. Where are we going? Where will this in take, take us? It may sound cool. It may sound good that we have all these things. But at the same time, we need to understand that we are heading towards a Pandora's box. Artificial intelligence offers followers a process that, is, that computer system can mimic. It's very, very important to understand. It mimics. It is very interesting that in Hausa language, a uh, computer is called Na Urami Kogolwa, which is wrong. It has, na Ura has no Kogolwa. Kogolwa means uh, thinking, brain. It, it has no brain. If you have your laptop, you open your laptop, you leave this laptop for the next 100 years, it is going to remain there. It needs an input from a human being. So it is not a na urami kokolwa. It may look fantastic that it does your spell check, it does your grammar check, and you become so wowed, so taken up by what it does, that you begin to glorify the technology as if it is some kind of demigod. But beneath all the codes and the algorithms and so on is a human being who sat down and designed it in his own image. It sets the goal based on needs or uh, based on needs or wants, and it assesses the value of any currently known information support uh, of the goal, gathers additional information that could support the goal. And the emphasis here is on the information that could support the goal rather than information that will uh, know that will support the goal. It could support the goal, not will support the goal, because the concept of will support is, is predicted on knowing what is the likely to be the consequences and the outcomes of what you do. The machine just simply tells you, if you do this, this is what will happen. But the consequences of what will happen, I don't know, I have no idea, I'm not interested, that's not my field, I'm not being programmed to do that. So it is very important for us to understand that. AI manipulates the data so that it achieves a form of consistency with existing information, define the relationships and truth values between existing uh, new information, and determine whether the goal is achieved, modify the goal in the light of new data and its effect on the probability of success, and repeat all the steps uh, as needed until the goal is achieved and found true or the possibilities for achieving it are exhausted. This is purely mathematical. And that, luckily for us, the, the chat GPT speech that we use have nothing to do with mathematics, because I know that is not one area that we are very weak on. So you don't have to worry about the mathematics. What you do is worry about the interface. You give it a qu query, it gives you an answer. A typical example of AI is Google. Google is one of the few services that has become an enabler. Somebody tells you something taken from either Hadith or the Quran. 
And you need to be an ustaz to understand because this guy can quote the hadith or the Quran or the Bible left, right and center. And it's just amazing. And you are like, wow, this guy is, is, is really, really fantastic. All you have to do is pick up a keyword or so from his quotation, put it in Google and you take it to where you are. And then the next thing you know, you have been converted into electronic ustaz. <laughs> so that way, all that mystique is gone. It's artificial intelligence. It's, it's not all that. And people keep getting worried about why is it that we don't have materials that deal with us in Google as much as we will have lots of. The fact is, Google works with what you give it. Everything there in Google is uploaded by someone. So if you don't upload, and all of us academicians are not uploading, we are downloading more and more flash drives. Archibalization has come up. We are now in archibalization era. Download it. Give me a coffee. Give me an e-coffee. And that's going to do all that. But we are not uploading our co copies. So Google doesn't even know who we are. So this is a challenge. But Google is one of our first interfaces of artificial intelligence. And even though you can create algorithm and provide access to data in support of this process within a computer, a computer's ability to achieve intelligence is severely limited. In other words, really, a computer has no intelligence. It's not intelligent. It's a human being who is intelligent, who creates the, 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 the algorithms that makes it look like it's intelligent. For example, a computer is incapable of understanding anything because it relies on machine processes to manipulate data using pure math in a strictly mechanical fashion. Likewise, computers can really separate truth from mistruth. It's very important for us to understand that. Once you want to use the computers in order to, to advance a particular cause, whether it is in public relations or whatever, whatever it is, a computer cannot. So you need the human judgment, the human intelligence to determine whether this is the truth or not. In fact, no computer can fully implement any of the mental activities described in the list that describes intelligence. It is important to understand that AI doesn't really have anything to do with human intelligence. Yes, some AI is model to simulate human uh, intelligence, but that is just what it is. A simulation, a mimic. It's not the real thing. It will never be the real thing, no matter how fascinating it is. And I think at the back of our mind, we all know this. It's nothing new. We all know that we're, what we're dealing with, we're dealing with a machine. But it's very important to emphasize that the birth word, artificial intelligence, that we are using now, seem to give the machine some kind of superior intelligence than it has. It doesn't. At the base of it all, it is our humanity that determines the value of what we do. And this is an application of artificial intelligence in our homes. And now we have reached a level where in some countries, particularly in South Korea, homes have become smart homes. Everything is controlled by artificial intelligence devices. Voice activated lighting in the system. Switch on the lights and the lights come on. Switch off the lights. So imagine you're on your bed and you want to switch off the light. You have to actually stand up and go to the switch and switch it off. But with artificial intelligence smart homes, you can just simply say, switch off the lights and switch off the light. Unfortunately, if you want to drink a glass of water, you can't just simply say, I want to drink water. You have to physically walk into the fridge, open the fridge, pull out a bottle and drink it. But you can tell the, 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 the fridge to increase the temperature or to lower the temperature. You can take it to all that sort of thing. So in other words, you can live in a smart home. Except that when they take off the lights, when Nepal goes off, then you're going to be in serious trouble. So this is something that we have to factor in, the overall larger economy. Now let's look at your field, your area, not my area, doctors <laughs> and the spinning. The American novelist Saul Bellow was acclaimed to be the first to use the term spin doctor in 1977 in one of his lectures discussing the role of public relations in helping political actors present themselves. Journalists started to use the term at the beginning of 1950s when discussing U.S. electoral uh, campaigns and activities of image control perpetuated by political public relations experts. Sigmund Freud's psychoanalysis techniques were employed to corrupt content for public persuasion campaigns. Most of the civil doctoral activities dealt with image management and persuasion. 
I'm not conviction. I'm not trying to convince you, but I'm trying to persuade you. I'm trying to tell you that this guy is really a good person. Yes, yes, I understand. He is a thief. He is corrupt. He has stolen a lot of money. We all know that. But look at what he has done. I mean, look at the hospitals he has built. I mean, look at the children that he has given scholarships to. Look at the roads that he has built. Yes, all the things that he has done is just about one tenth of the money that he has stolen. Look, he didn't steal it. He is keeping it in a trust for his community. Now, that's a swing doctor talking. <laughs> you want to argue that? You yeah, want one? <laughs> so it's about image control. We are dealing with crooks, and we know they are crooks. Come to think of it, they themselves also know that they are crooks. But your job is to portray this person in an excellent light, to tell people that don't Allah, 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 to influence media on behalf of their clients. The job of a spin doctor is to put on an interpretation uh, slant, you slant it on events and or situations by providing a positive angle to a news story. Spin doctors uh, is part of an image transformation strategy to rebrand uh, something or someone else. I'm not giving examples. I don't have to give examples, but we know the examples of people that we can now effectively spin doctor. They have spin doctored themselves uh, through Facebook and other places. This is a strategy often used by companies to make their products or services that are not selling well more appealing. Uh, in order to make politicians or uh, political institutions or corporations more uh, attractive, spin doctors seek to frame their clients in a positive light by exercising some control over what is said about their clients and how it is said. The job of the spin doctor is uh, primarily about three basic functions. You monitor what people are saying. You go on Facebook, you go on Instagram, you go on news uh, channels, and you monitor what people are saying about him. Uh, then advise. No, he's not going to listen to you. Can you slow down on some of the things that you're doing? He's not going to do that. But you have to do that. You have to advise them. You have to tell them what to do. And then you have to do damage control. He has ignored you. Then you have to do the damage control. Now, if I were a spin doctor and I know that my principal is really a crook, there are two things I can do. One or two things I can do. Either I resign or I become a crook like him. All right? So that I tell you. Okay? I can go away. She can do it. She can do it. She can do it. She can do it. So you have this moral absolutely moral imperative as a spin doctor where you are not about building relationships you are not about making him better you are make, about making him good when he is not while there are substantial similarities between the tasks performed by spin doctors and by public relations professional the two terms are not interchangeable so i don't want anybody here to start thinking that i'm saying all public relations people are spin doctors they are not uh, because what they do are totally uh, different. Spin doctoring is considered a reactive activity to protect the image of politicians, institutions, or organizations from negative events and focuses on producing sound bite materials in the press room and contacting editors and publishers to sell a favorable story. Public relations by contracts is considered a proactive activity of openly telling the story from the politician uh, or organization's own perspective where news releases, speeches, press conferences, and press advertising by providing content that is honest and not decipherable. Which means that spin doctors are decipherable. Because the moment we start emphasizing that this is honest and not decipherable, gives the impression of the alternative perspective of what spin doctors do. That they are not decipherable, but they are trying to deceive, trying to show people that there is an alternative perspective. The goal of public relations is to develop mutual interests 
uh, between the client and his or her main publics. Spend doctoring use a variety of methods to get their clients across the mainstream journalists uh, to a wider spread. Some of them include, these are some of the uh, activities that they do. The leak, releasing information only up to a favorite journalist or on a particular issue. This, this is like exclusive, but only to a journalist who keeps consistently writing good reviews about the principle. So you, you will select that person. This guy is good. He is our friend. He will never betray us. Any journalist who exposes our principle for corruption or for some other improper behavior is blacklist, blacklisted. We, we, don't, we don't deal with him because he's not with us. The priest punishing journalists for negative reporting. Are they really negative reporting or are they just simply reporting what he did? And when somebody did something that is wrong in the eyes of the public, it is negative. Yes, but we report it because it is our responsibility to tell the truth. But spin doctors don't like it. Yes, I know. You are my friend. We finished BUK together, the same class. And you know I am the public relations uh, person for this particular uh, politician. Why did you expose that story? Yeah, but he's a crook. You know he's a crook. But uh, I thought our relationship he said that you will overlook some of these things. And that is why all this issue of moral imperative comes in. At what point does your morality come in? And at what point does your sense of duty come in? And I think people in public relations are in a very, very, very difficult position, particularly in Nigeria of now, when you know that we are dealing with people who are extremely challenging. The spray, bullying, and intimidation trying to punish journalists for negative coverage, calling them fake news, enemy of the people, uh, a la Donald Trump. Or just simply using a very traditional African method, beat them up, but not directly. You get some thugs to go and just shake him up. I mean, we know the club he goes to. We know the cinema he goes to. We know the restaurant he goes to. Just wait until he comes out. And then you surround him with all this scare him up. The next time he's not going to start talking about your principle. Get rid of it now. Revealing a scandal or negative information all at once to get it over with rather than having it continue to develop and bleed out. Yes, he has stolen some money and we know it. Uh, we probably have videos or audios or pictures of it. Let's, let's, let's deal with it all at once. Now, it is not good spin doctrine for you to bring up more additional evidence years later after the first incident. You are now bleeding it. You know, you are, you are making the maximum gain out of it. And the spin doctors have disappeared in the cases that such things happen because they know it is beyond their control. Especially now, with all these uh, uh, video recording techniques and so on. And now everybody has uh, uh, video cameras in all sorts of places. In a pen, in a necktie, uh, in your ring. I even have a charger, a phone charger that is actually a camera. So you go in, so you plug it in and it is recording in full video everything that is going on in the in the place you don't have to ask somebody to stand up so that they can zoom into the frame uh it is it, everything will be recorded there so if i were in public position sir i would be wary of anybody coming with any electronics into my office even if i want to tell the truth i want to tell the truth so that when the truth comes out it is the truth so that nobody manipulates it and gives it a, a, a different interpretation One of the examples of spin doctoring is sports washing, which is at a dawn at a national level. Sports washing uh, is a label some have given to using the sports to rehabilitate an image or a reputation. And everybody loves sports, you know, whether it is football or whatever it is, everybody loves it, I know. Everybody loves it. So you have sports washing. 
And you have examples of sports washing in 1936 with Hitler and Nazi Germany uh, and treatment of Jews and so on. You have 1978 World Cup in Argentina dictatorship. But the most important and recent sports washing is Saudi Arabia. People are accusing Saudi Arabia of human rights abuse. And uh, the ruler of the country, Mohammed uh, bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia, on Wednesday said, yes, we do sports washing in order to improve our image. I don't care. If I can get 1% one, one, 1 of my GDP, that, that's all. So it's something that is done at a personal level and a higher official level. I've been told my time is up, or almost up. I appeal that eh? you give me more time. Please, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. We're enjoying this. Yes. Please, I am pleading. Okay. I am pleading that you go on. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, my president. So, now, Church GPT, which is a typical example of how you can write your own uh, public relations releases using this. And it gives you all sorts of information. One of my mentees, wanted to do his PhD. He has a topic, but he doesn't know how to frame it. So we, we loaded chat GPT for him. He typed the topic, and it gave him a research question, a statement of the problem, objectives. All, all at once. There it is. So for academicians, or for those who want to take a shortcut, it provides a, a basis, but there is no intelligence. So it is, it is a little bit of a dangerous thing uh, that we do, but this is chat GPT. It's not new. By November 2022, a whole new level of AI was entered with chat GPT uh, that it can understand questions written in a natural language form. What's the difference between chat GPT and, and Google? When you type, what is NIPR in Google? It gives you a whole list of results from their website to people, what people have written about it, but not with chat GPT. Chat so GPT will interpret NIPR for you, gives you the history and give you the, the name of the president neatly in a beautiful natural language form. In other words, it has done all the work for you. You don't have to work hard. It has, it has done it all for you. Chat uh, GPT was <coughs> trained on a huge volume of human created information uh, from the internet, including Wikipedia and other websites, books, discussion forms, and more. It is important to note. Now, the model didn't build an understanding of the world based on that data. Rather, it got uncannily good at putting together uh, <coughs> sequences of words which will make sense to the reader. It is generative, meaning that it generates results. It is pre-trained, meaning that it is based on all, uh, all this data it, it, it ingests, and it uses the transformative architecture that <coughs> way text inputs to understand context. It predicts uh, the correct order of words based on statistical probability, and it does that incredibly well, but it doesn't really understand what is going on. And the beauty of it, it even tells you that the results that I'm giving you are not necessarily accurate, so don't take them all at face value. So, it can make factual mistakes, but its mistakes often seem highly plausible at first glance. Because that is what it should learn how to do. So once it makes the first mistake, then it makes another mistake. If you ask it a question, it makes another mistake, it corrects the first one. So it learns. As it goes along, as it's making mistakes, it is learning. By the time you input your query about four times, it won't give you any mistakes. It is not like that you could fire your, your, your marketing team and expect your DPT to replace them. So don't, don't do that yet. Now, for those of us who are lucky enough to have some of these things like uh, iPhone, you know, hey Siri, you know, Siri will call and says, there's somebody who is calling you, do you want to take it? So, no, I don't want to take it, cut, off, cut him off. So, hey Siri, don't, don't cut, cut him off. Some of the devices that you use with hey Siri include HomePod, you know, the, the, the speaker. All you have to do is, once you set it up, hey Siri. Can you get me some B.I.G., notorious B.I.G., or D.M.X., or Tupac Shakur? And then it will just boom, 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 it's not playing. If you have that, make sure that you do that when your wife is away. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure your wife will not like D.M.X. 
she will not like to pack, especially at a high volume. Okay, she may like uh, uh, hamus breaker or, or something like that, but you don't like hamus breaker. So the fact is, Siri can do a lot of things for you, but we have not tried it. Those of us with iPhones have not bothered to really uh, do it. Both there's Alexa and then there is uh, Google. People are not aware that you can talk to Google. You don't have to type, but you can actually talk to Google. You can accept voice input and they give you the answers. Google and ChatGPT will all interact with users by a single line text entry field and provide text results. Google returns search results. GPT uh, returns uh, responses that are based on context and intent. Like I said, Google gives you a list, but chat GPT gives you a sentence, series of sentences, prose, narrative. In fact, if you want to write a short story, just ask the chat GPT to write a short story for you, and it will do that completely, no matter the theme. All you have to do is adapt it. You can, for example, ask Google to write a story, but chat GPT can do this. Fundamentally, Google's power is the ability to do enormous databases look up and provide you with a series of matches. ChatGPT's power, on the other hand, is the ability to purge the queries and produce fully uh, uh, fleshed out answers and results based on the most uh, of the world's digitally accessible text-based information. ChatGPT has very few limits to the separate matter uh, expertise. That, that is why he's scared, he's very worried that this seems seem to be bottomless. I mean, it just keeps going on and on and on. You can ask it to explain uh, <coughs> quantum physics, write a piece of code, write a short piece of fiction, and compare the governance styles of former presidents of Nigeria, which actually I did. What is the governance style of the former presidents of Nigeria to 2021? And chat GPT will give you all of them. It will evaluate each one of them, right from Obasanjo up to Buhari. I think you should try it. Chat GPT is a tool that can help PR and marketing professionals work faster and more effectively. But it is nowhere about to replace them. The most strategic for PR professionals will need to become communication engineers using actionable real-time data and analytics to drive strategic strategy and creativity. At driven text such as uh, AI driven text such as ChatGPT will be key component of this transformation. When paired with the right data, ChatGPT will make communications professionals more performant by enabling them to create uh, base content much faster. Convergence, and this is the way in which spin doctors or public relations officials can convert with start GPT, automatic content generation. It can create your content for you. All you have to do is give it the keywords, key expression, just like you do in Google, and then it will generate something for you. Sentiment analysis. Uh, these powered sentiment analysis tools can quickly go to public sentiment. So what are people saying about your principal on Facebook, on, on, on uh, Instagram? and other places. It can do that sensitive analysis and then give you a result. And based on that, now you can advise your principal. If your principal is the person who will listen to you, and because some will not bother to listen to, to what, you, what you say, no matter, because they are fixed in what they want to do. Uh, deep fake technology. Chat GTP can also be used for deep fake technology. This driven deep fake technology can manipulate audio and video to create realistic and fabricated content. Uh, maybe somebody used artificial intelligence to create a video of uh, someone uh, accepting some money in foreign exchange. Maybe that person is not that person. It is all artificial intelligence, right? Right? Yeah. <laughs> My lips are sealed. Recently, this is an example of deep fake. In Spain, some people go went on uh, Instagram, picked up pictures of some girls, run it through an artificial intelligence called Cloth Off. Now I know people are going to start noting down this artificial intelligence. Cloth Off. That is the name of, of the software. Cloth Off. Then, when you load Cloth Off, and you load the picture in Clotho, 
it removes the clothing of that particular person and produced a naked person. And that's what they did in Spain on Wednesday. And when the naked pictures were available, now they posted them all over the internet. And the girls were, were, were shocked because their, their parents started getting upset with them. Everybody was upset with everybody and nobody knew at that time who did this. Because they can just pick up your picture anywhere. Put it inside the artificial intelligence processor and then remove your clothes and then there you are totally naked. So, in the interest of science uh, and research, not any voyeurism, I loaded it. And then I pick up a picture of a man. Uh, don't worry, he's a, a white man, not a black man. <laughs> and I put it inside. That's one experiment. Then I did another experiment. I took a picture of a black woman. And I put it inside. And then I discovered that the artificial intelligence is not as good as it thought it was. In the first instance, it consistently gave me female anatomy of even a man. So you see, there's a face of a man, but the body of a woman. And then secondly, it kept consistently giving me the nude image of a white person, not a black person. So you have a black face and a white body. So there, there is, the way they treated it, it only works with white people, white ladies, to give you white bodies. But I can tell you this, the way the human mind works, somebody sooner or later will come up with an artificial intelligence for Nigerian politicians. <laughs> because the, the idea is once they get that, then they, they have got a good thing. But this is one example of the deep peak technologies that happen with artificial intelligence. Social media manipulation, you go on Facebook and start saying, no, the guy is very good. And you can now use your chat GPT to actually enable you to create the, the, the press release that you can now send to do all that. Data analytics, micro-targeting, algorithm, and so on. Drawbacks. Manipulation and misinformation. There is that. But then that's what screen doctors are all about, isn't it? <laughs> They're about manipulation. Not misinformation, but slanted information. Because when you say misinformation, you're trying to mislead. You are trying to say he doesn't do it, but he did it. But look, don't Allah, don't Allah. Mutu 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 it doesn't think in terms of right or wrong. It only gives you those parameters. So the right or wrong is your own decision to make. Regulation, ethics, so. This is a practical example. If we are doing a workshop, I would have actually suggested that people far out. So what we did was, I asked the question, very tiny to read. It says, why did Peter or B of Labour Party lose the election? All right. Why did he lose the election? And it gave an answer of why he lost the election. Detailed answer of why he lost the election. But then at the end, it says, well, when you look at the main screen, it says, this may not be accurate. So try to, to make sure that you use your other judgment on that. And then I ask another one. <laughs> Who is Abdullah Obadam? <laughs> that is, that is, once you get on the internet, the first person you ask about is, Who are you? You know, you try to find out where you are. Who is Abdullah Obadam? And it gave some of all that thing. A little bit plattery. I mean, it says things about me that I know are not really, really true. But I don't mind. <laughs> and then finally, I think, who was Amariah Joss? Amariah Joss was a musician uh, from northern Nigeria. And it says, Amariah Joss, whose full name was al Muhammad Muhammad Shilusi, was a prominent traditional ruler and leader in Nigeria. <laughs> So as you can see, this is not something that you absolutely rely on because it just simply collects information from here and there and then it, it, it gives you all sorts of things. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, while artificial intelligence can change the field of popular relations, it is not able to replace it. 
the human intelligence, the human element is not uh, not easily. Yeah, it can, right? Well, that sounds like very good. It can change it. It can transform it. But it can never replace it, no matter how good it is. Success of PR strategies require expertise and experience of skilled professionals. AI is a tool, not a human, and lacks the emotions needed when it comes to certain parts of the business. AI is here to stay, as it has now become an essential part of the business landscape. The ever-emerging technologies and pre uh, are presenting new opportunities for growth and development. And as AI continues to advance, industries such as media and PR are poised to even more disruption and transformation. For PR pros, particularly 2023, will be a time to test the waters of ChatGPT, tasking it with low-stakes exercises. In the months ahead, we can expect to see improvements of ChatGPT's data and overall accuracy as it continues to enter the mainstream. Additionally, Chat OpenAI, that is those who created it, uh, competitors will be scrambling to track ChatGPT's growth, likely driving innovation in the space. We may still have a way to go until we can fully incorporate ChatGPT into our processes and systems, but communicators who stay ahead uh, of the curve will have the upper hand as this technology continues to advance rapidly. Thank you very much.